Here we're going to show you how to use the McClure series to, to, to. Here we're going to use the McLaurin series to. <laughs> all the words keep escaping me. Well, all right. Do I like to online? Again. Here. <laughs> <laughs> What's the word? Find the to what? Find the product. To find is a good word. I like that. That's Welcome a really good. Welcome to Electron word. Line. Here we're going to use the McLaurin series to find the product of e to the x and sine of x. Now what we're doing now is we're going to write out this, the McLaurin series for e to the x and then multiply that times the McLaurin series for the sine of x. So it's going to look something like this. This is equal to one plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so forth and we're going to multiply that times the Maclaurin series of sine of x which is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial and so forth. Now you can see that trying to multiply an infinite sum with an infinite sum that of course will take an infinite amount of time and we don't want to do that. But what we can do is perhaps multiply the first two or three or four terms of the first summation with the first two or three or four terms of the second summation. Notice that in the denominator as the factorials get very large the contributing factor of that will become very small, especially when we start multiplying these terms together that have fairly large denominators. So we can probably get away with only using the first three or four of these terms. So let's go ahead and multiply this out and we get the following. This is equal to, we're going to take one and multiply times the first, let's say three terms of the second summation. So we end up with uh, an x minus x cubed over 3 and then plus x to the fifth over 5 and of course I can't forget the factorials 5 factorial. Now notice I'm left some space in there because I want to line them up with the exponents of x in the right column like this. It makes it easier to add them up together. So now we're going to take the second term x and multiply times the first three terms here and see what we get. So we add to that x times x, which gives us an x squared, and an x times a minus x cubed that gives us a minus x to the fourth over 3 factorial, and x times a positive x to the fifth that gives us an x to the sixth over 5 factorial. And notice I think I'll go ahead and cut it off right here, so any term that has an x to the seven or larger we'll just ignore. Now we use the third term, we're going to multiply this times every one of those. So we have an x cubed, so we end up with a positive x cubed over 2 factorial. And then this multiplied times this, that gives us a minus x to the fifth. So minus x to the fifth over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. And then this times this would give us x to the seventh, and we'll just go ahead and ignore that. Then we take the next term right here and multiply it times x, so we get a positive x to the fourth over 3 factorial. And then this times this, that gives us x to the sixth, sixth a minus, a minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial times 3 factorial. 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And then we'll drop the rest. Then we could do maybe one more, we'll multiply this times this. This gives us x to the fifth over 4 factorial, x to the fifth over 4 factorial, and then the next term would give us an x to the seventh, so we'll go ahead and drop that off, and now we can add all those terms together. So we end up with an x. Here we end up with a plus x squared. Here we end up with a minus x cubed over 6 plus x cubed over 2. So we have a minus 1 sixth, so we'll do a little arithmetic here, minus 1 sixth plus 1 half, that would be 
plus 3 sixth minus that is equal to a plus 2 sixth, which is equal to 1 third. So when we add these two together, we get a plus 1 third x cubed. Next, we're going to have to add these together. So we have a minus, just looking at the denominators, we have a minus 1 over 6, and we have a plus 1 over 6. Wow, they cancel out, so we don't have an x to the 4th term. Then moving on to the next, here we have, uh, let's see, 1 over 5 factorial, so it gives us a 1 over 120. Then here we have 2 times 6, which is 12, a minus 1 over 12. And here we have 1 over 4 factorial, that's plus 1 over 24. So the common denominator here is 120, so we have 1 over 120 minus 10 over 120 and plus 5 over 120. So that's minus 10 plus 5 plus 1, that's a minus 4 over 120, that's equals minus 1, 4. And so divide by 4, that would be equal to minus 1 over 30. So that goes over here, minus 1 over 30, x to the, oop, that would be over here, x to the fifth. And then, of course, we can continue like that, but I believe that here we have a pretty good first one, two, three, four terms that gives us an approximation of the product e to the x times sine of the x. Now, all we have to do is plug in a value for x, and we can evaluate the product using this summation. And that's how it's done.